Hello there, folks. I'm going to show you how to download, set up, and configure the Citra Nintendo 3DS emulator for Windows PC. A lot of people have requested me to do videos of this awesome emulator, but I haven't done any yet because the um, emulator is still pretty early in its development and the games have run pretty choppy and laggy until just recently. Um, with this uh, new version here, this custom, I think this was a custom build. It's got a CPU JIT compiler, which helps to speed up the emulator a lot, a whole lot. So you'll want to get this version. Um, this may be different by the time you're looking at this video. Depends on if uh, you're watching this right after I post it or months or years down the line. But anyways, whatever's going to be here will be the best one, best option to go with. So we'll go ahead and enter in the little captcha here. Donkey's years. Download this thing. I've done some testing here, so I'm gonna have several of these. So, anyways, um, it's in a zip format. Um, where I got this from was actually in 7Z, so 7-zip format. But a lot of people I know are kind of confused at that. So zip is pretty universal. Everybody should know what to do with that. So you'll want to extract, move, copy over these files, whatever term you want to use, into their own folder. And you'll want to open up this exe right here. And I've already got one open. Um, so I'm going to show you some basic configuration. There's not a lot of configuration settings you can actually do, so you can't really screw anything up here. So go to emulation, configure, um, right here. Performance, enable CPU JIT. That's what's gonna give you a big speed boost. So you wanna hit that, you can set whatever region you want here. I'm in the USA, so I'll leave it at that. You can set all this up however you want. So input, we'll come back to that in just a second. Um, graphics, you will want to definitely enable the hardware renderer. Um, that'll make the graphics look in HD, and I noticed at most one or two frames per second difference, and a lot of games didn't have any difference, and the games look way better with this. You want to enable the shader JIT, you'll get a speed boost with this and better graphics. Um, and the scaled resolution, this actually might be what, I think the hardware renderer and scaled resolution are what helped to make it in HD. And um, you can do V-Sync if you get screen tearing or anything, but you don't have to enable that. So for audio, I haven't actually seen what the difference is of unchecking this. Well, let's just read this. This post-processing effect adjusts audio speed to match emulation speed and helps prevent audio stutter. This, however, increases audio latency. So I've only ever tried this with it checked. You can mess around with it if you want. You can leave this on auto. Basically, you have this SDL2 or null. Null just basically means no audio, which I think can give you some a speed boost in some games. I prefer just to go ahead and have the audio. Layout, I like to leave it or set it instead of default to large screen. That's going to make your main game window big and the touchscreen window small. Um, if you leave it at default, then the main game screen is not nearly as big. It doesn't look as cool to me. You can swap the screens too, switch the layouts however you want. The debug, you don't have to mess with that. All right, so back to input. I think I've read in some of the, the latest nightly builds straight from the Citra team, they are finally implementing gamepad support. So like you're wired and some, if you have the adapter wireless Xbox 360 controllers, or I use um, the NVIDIA Shield controller. I recommend using that if you have it, it's awesome. Um, but natively, as of this awesome build I'm using here of Citra, it doesn't support gamepad functions. So what you need to do is get some kind of a gamepad um, to keyboard button mapper. So let's see, I almost forget the name of this, key sticks. So yep, that's what I'm using, it's called key sticks. I'll put a link in the video description for this. Um, so you can see here, just quickly go over it, A button associated with A, B button, S, X button, Z, Y button, X. So you can see how that's all set up. You can change stuff um, by hitting the edit the profile, move this over. You can click each one of these, quick edit, hold key, and then switch, hit whatever, or set it to whatever you want. It takes a little bit of time to set up, but it's well worth it. Using the keyboard for this really sucks. 
trying to, you know, use like analog stick controls with the keyboard, just, that just doesn't work. It doesn't work very well, at least. So we'll close out of that. So you can configure that however you'd like. And then before we actually load a ROM and show you how that works, I just wanted to um, explain about how you get the games to actually work. Um, right here is the official Citra emulator website. I'll put the link in the video description. I'm going to go over here to Wiki and dumping game cartridges. So if you have an actual 3DS on certain firmwares and all these tools here, you can dump and decrypt your own original copies of 3DS games. Or you can try to go online and find someone that's already decrypted them and upload them to a website and download the ROM. That way, it'll be in .3DS format. Um, but I'm, I can't show you due to YouTube's policies where that's at. You're just gonna, all I can say is you just need to Google for it. Um, so anyways, once you uh, have some games in .3DS format, what you'll need to do, go to File, Load File, and right here, I've got Pokemon Omega Ruby, and I labeled it as Decrypted, it's .3DS, you hit Open, and Blammo. One thing, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, this doesn't show natively the frames per second, and you can see it's running like wild right now. So what I have set up here is Fraps. I'm not recording with Fraps. I just had to use, this is one of the only programs I could find that actually will display the frames per second correctly because there is no full screen functionality built into Citra just yet. So it's hard to use a lot of programs like MSI, uh, yeah, MSI, I think that's it, Afterburner. Um, because it only shows you that information when you're in full screen. And this is using OpenGL, so it has some crazy um, functionality with Afterburner anyways. But, um, so yeah, you can see the, the frames per second is going super fast. Usually you want this to be at like 60 frames per second. I think there probably are some 30 frames per second games. Of course, we're talking NTSC American um, frames per second. But there is no frame limiter in Citra that I'm aware of. No way to, to tell it, hey, you're in a way too fast stick at 60. So for now, it's just going to go as fast as your hardware and the emulator can process it. Um, but let me uh, let's see. Let me grab my controller here real quick, and I'll show you how this actually works. So I'm going to click on it first. There we go. So you can hit begin game. And you can see here the frames per second is getting a little bit lower now. But uh, yeah, a lot of games work really well. There are still quite a few that don't work so well. Um, quite a few that don't work here. So you're just going to have to mess around with it. Try out different games. Watch the videos that I do. And uh, you'll be able to see exactly what's working well and what's not. You can see this is going crazy fast right now. We'll leave this running for another minute or two. There we go. It's starting to slow down. It's almost like real speed now. It kind of kind of goes up and down. But once you actually get to the main gameplay, it'll kind of remain more steady throughout. So we'll give it just a second here. Boop -a -doop -a -doop 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 Let me see. I forget how much longer we gotta go. I'm just gonna quickly. Just quickly go through here, just so I can show you. Right. Are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Let's go. So yeah, hopefully the Citra will... Uh, somebody in the Citra team, or it's uh, open source, so whoever does it, hopefully will implement a frame limiter so that it doesn't run crazy fast. They probably haven't even needed to even think about a frame limiter before because the games wouldn't even run at full speed, let alone way above it. So as you can see here now that we're getting the main gameplay, it's hovering right around full speed, right around 60 frames per second. So that's pretty cool. Not all games are going to be like that. A lot of games will, if you have decent enough hardware, will run at 100, 120 frames per second if they're not hardware intensive games. Um, but yeah, this is running pretty good as you can see. Once I get inside here, see, once I get inside the house, it's going to run a little bit faster. But let me go ahead and just stop it. You can see my uh, video 
my 15 or 20 minute gameplay video of this. And you can see the actual battles and how the graphics look. In a little while, I want to post that in the next few days. Check out the video description for a playlist link of all of my Citra videos. I'm going to be trying to add one per day for the next little while at least. Probably the next couple months because this is really cool. I'm just getting into this emulator and I'm going to be doing a lot of testing. So yeah, leave me a comment if you have any questions. Hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.